Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's, a special welcome to our guests and visitors this morning. We're glad that you're here. We pray that God gives you opportunities to join us in the future. As we worship our God this morning, as we think about the tasks that he gives us to, to be watchmen, to, to let people know of the, the, the spiritual dangers uh, incoming, and, and if, if we fail to do that, then the responsibility is really on us, but if we do it faithfully and then they still reject it, well, that's on them. We need to at least be faithful in warning people about the, the, the cliff that they're running towards. Everything that you need to participate with the service you can find projected on the screen. At this time, I invite the congregation to please stand and forgive me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Mercy to God in heaven. I am altogether sinful from birth, and in countless ways I have sinned against you, and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me, according to your unfailing love. Let me think of my sin, and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. At this time, the congregation may be seated and will continue with our first year. He will die for his sin, 
but you will have saved yourself. Son of man, say to the house of Israel, this is what you are saying. Our offenses and sins weigh us down, and we are wasting away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes from Romans chapter 13. Starting at verse 1. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from the fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good, but if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant and agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to government. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet. And whatever other commandment that may be are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel comes from Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 15. Please stand. Up. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault. Just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our lesson from God's Word today, we're going to examine one of the toughest things for us as humans to, to, to have to do. As, as Christians, what we're asked to do. Ezekiel is told that he's supposed to be a watchman. That he's supposed to warn the wicked about their sins. 
think about in our culture, in our day and age, the thought of warning someone about their sins, telling them that what they're doing is wrong, and just sort of feel that stress level rising. What if they write me off? What if they blacklist me? What if they don't like what I have to say and, and they never speak to me again? Confronting someone over their sin, telling someone that they're sinful, one of the toughest things I think we have to do as, as Christians. It's a scary concept. It was, it was scary in Ezekiel's time and scary in our time as well. Ezekiel was called to a pretty difficult ministry. The first part, he had to rob people of the false hope that they would be delivered and not go into exile. And then when they were carried off into exile, then he was called upon to give them a message of comfort for restoration from exile. And in both cases, people were kind of inclined to not believe Ezekiel before the exile to think there's no way that that would happen. And then once it happens, the morale of the people carried off into a foreign land uh, apart from every sort of religious festival and, and practice that they held dear for so many generations is just gone. And Ezekiel, you want me to keep the faith? And God tells Ezekiel that he's a watchman. That he is to warn the wicked. And God encourages Ezekiel that he needs to be faithful in this task. Because if he doesn't warn the wicked, and the wicked dies, he dies for his sin, but that blood is on Ezekiel's hands. Because as a watchman, he failed to raise the alarm. And he encourages him, if, 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 you, if you give the, the warning, and people don't believe you, and people don't heed the warning, then they will die for their sin, but it won't be on your head. And the same is true for us. God calls us to, to be watchmen. To remind people of their sin. To use law and gospel to convict hearts and to turn people to the only solution for their sins, Jesus. But it's scary. It's scary then to tell someone that they're a sinner. To tell someone that they need a savior. To tell someone that they're careening towards a cliff. That they're running towards their ultimate demise. And not just physical death, but spiritual death in hell. It's not a message that pretty much anyone from our generation wants to hear. It's not something that, that, that you can bring up easily and casually in conversation. You have to be intentional. You have to try. And you have to be willing to risk the potential fallout of the relationship of, of that person maybe not wanting to talk to you again. You have to risk all of that just to warn them. Because the, the way it stands right now, we have a, a whole a whole mass of people that are sprinting headlong towards this, this cliff of, of eternal death. And there's so few of us standing right at the edge trying to grab hold, trying to warn people that they're running towards death. And so we have to keep the stakes in mind when we think about the call that our God has given us to be watching. Because as scary as it is, the potential loss of, of a relationship, the fact that they might never speak to you again, as scary as that is, the, the thought of them perishing in hell, the thought of them careening towards that ultimate 
death. It's got to outweigh it. Our Romans lesson talked about it, didn't it? That love is the fulfillment of the law. And so to have the sort of love that, that, that we want to, to intervene in that potential deadly situation that they find themselves in is love. Even if they don't recognize it at the time. Even if they decide to write you off at the time. Even if they never speak to you again in this life. If you get to, to see them in heaven and laugh about it, it'll all be worth it. I think it's tough for us to sort of draw those stark priorities, isn't it? Because this world is, is really, in a sense, kind of all we know from experience. And so we tend to value the things in this world just a little bit higher. And that includes things like relationships. That includes things like how we, we interact with those around us and not wanting to have someone ever speak to us again. Not wanting someone to, to turn to us in anger and, and to be upset at us for our words. And so we just keep silent. The stakes couldn't possibly be higher. With eternal life and death on the line, we have to heed the call of our God to be watchful. We have to be willing to risk it. We have to be willing to, to, to grab hold of that sinner rushing towards the cliff and tell him about the danger that they're in even if they don't want to hear it. I think the, the, the term is sort of tough love, isn't it? Telling someone what they need to hear, even if it isn't what they want to hear. That's what our God calls us to do as watchmen. But it's tough, isn't it? We don't really live in a, a culture where that's acceptable. It's, it's, it's almost unheard of to try to Tell someone that what they're doing is a sin. You're labeled as, as hateful, as intolerant. So we have to check our motives. You see, if, if you understand the, the law and the gospel, if you understand that the only way that, that I'm saved is through Jesus, if you look at the cross and see what your Savior bore for you, if you look in the mirror and see that sinful, sinful human being that doesn't deserve the compassion that Jesus had for you, that puts us in the right position for sharing Jesus with others. Not as someone that thinks that they're better than someone else, but as a fellow sinner who knows that Jesus is their only hope and that Jesus is the only hope for their hearers. That Jesus is the only hope for, for the, the people in their lives that, that maybe don't know it yet. And so when, when we focus on what Jesus has already done for us, the compassion and mercy that is shown in us as sinful human beings, that gets us in the proper perspective and attitude for sharing it with others. It's not an easy task that our God has called us. It's scary. It's perhaps one of the scariest things that our God calls us to do. But remember that he doesn't leave us alone. He didn't leave Ezekiel alone. He doesn't leave us alone. He gives us his word. He gives us his promises including the promise to be with us to the very end of the age. He promises to, to bless us. To bless the, the preaching and the teaching of his word, that it never goes away from the end, but always accomplishes the purpose to which he sent it. So when our God calls us to be watchmen, if we, if we fail, to raise the alarm, that's on us. But if we're faithful and we raise the alarm, then even if they don't listen, don't heed the alarm, at least we were faithful to the calling. And who knows, 
God might be using us as the first step in a whole string of different people in that person's life that eventually results in them believing in Jesus. We've got to have patience as we try to win hearts. So don't be afraid. As scary as it is to be a watcher, as scary as it is to sell, tell someone that they're a sinner that needs Jesus, just remember that you're a sinner that needs Jesus too. And with humility, with the same compassion that our Savior has for us, reach out for others. Tell them to be on the watch for sin in their own hearts. And tell them to cling to Jesus as the only solution as their ticket to heaven, their ticket to paradise, the greatest gift that they've ever been given. And let's be faithful as our God calls us to be watching. Amen. And may the peace of transcend all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time we join in our next hymn.
You are to speak the truth in love, as the Apostle Peter reminds us. Love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The ability to carry out this calling is not in us, but comes from God alone. As St. Paul reminded the Corinthian Christians, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. The Holy Spirit, who himself has called you to this ministry, will be with you. In keeping with the word and will of the Lord, you are about to be installed as teachers at St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church. I ask you in the presence of God in this congregation, are you fully determined to carry out this work in accordance with the grace God will give you? If so, answer, I am. I am. Do you believe that the canonical books of the Old and New Testament are the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the three ecumenical creeds, the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you solemnly promise that all your teachings will conform to the Holy Scriptures and the Lutheran Confessions? If so, answer, I do. I do. Will you give faithful witness to Christ in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do and say? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help. Amen. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously will give you the strength and compassion to perform them. And brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard the solemn promise given by these teachers you have called. I urge you, therefore, to receive them with joy and to keep them in mind always with the word of God as members of this congregation. To work together with them for our Lord's kingdom so that by your works of service, the body of Christ may be built up. To help them by word and example in teaching the young, remembering how the scriptures urge you to bring up your children in the training and instruction of the Lord. To pray for them continually in their ministry among you, so that it may be greatly blessed and so that they may have a cheerful spirit spirit in all their duties. To provide for their physical needs, for the Lord says the worker deserves his wages. To honor and love them as the Apostle Peter urges, live in harmony with one another, be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. I now ask you in the presence of God, are you willing to receive these as servants of Christ, to show them love and honor and to support them with your gifts and your prayers? If so, answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. The Almighty and merciful God strengthen and assist you always. And we pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, fountain of all wisdom, we praise and thank you for your goodness in giving us a Lutheran elementary school. Continue to bless our labors here so that your word may dwell richly in us and in our children, that your name may be glorified. Give the Holy Spirit to your servants, to Tom and Abby, and equip them with heavenly wisdom and strength, that they may lead our children to you and despite any discouragements, faithfully carry out the duties of this calling. Move our students to godliness and obedience, and cause them to grow through their instruction in your word, so that they may serve you throughout their lives, and finally inherit eternal life. Help us at all times to regard them as ones whom you have sent, so that we can support them in their ministry, and pray and work for the welfare of our school. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Tom and Abby, 
I hereby install you as teachers at St. Peter's Lutheran School in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord pour on you his Holy Spirit for the work committed to you, that you may faithfully proclaim the gospel. Go then, take up the work to which you have been called. The Lord bless you and make you a blessing to men, that you may bear fruit and that your fruit may remain to you. this time I invite the congregation to join with me in the prayer of the church as it's projected on the screen. Please stand. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls, and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Thank you for those who teach and preach the same truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, tears of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. And here's Lord as we bring to you our private. bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And dear Lord, hear us as we pray the prayer that you have taught us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor. outside uh, to, to have a little bit of and to, to wish them well as they, as they carry on this, this high call. Um, then I've been asked uh, to make an announcement about Fall Fest. So 
Um, Mrs. Mrs. Acker is looking for donations. Um, 100 pumpkins. So um, she's looking for a whole, whole bunch of pumpkins. So if you have any that you want to donate, please talk to Mrs. Acker about pumpkins. They're looking for a whole bunch of them, looking for 100. Um, so Fall Fest, 100 pumpkins, talk to Mrs. Acker. Um, uh, next Sunday we'll be having an open forum. So if by any chance you could be here next Sunday, um, we'll be right after church there with District President Mike Jensen. Um, so it's it's a pre-call meeting, so it's a chance for uh, um, for uh, um, us all to get together and talk about ministry moving forward. So that will be next Sunday, the 27th. So please put that on the calendar and if you get the chance to, to make it there. Um, so next Sunday, 10 a.m right after worship, uh, District President Mike Jensen pre-call meeting. And then we're hoping to have the, 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 the formal call meeting uh, approximately two weeks after that. Um, so we're looking at uh, October 7th is what we're looking at. It's a Wednesday. Now it could be the Tuesday or Thursday, but that's what we're looking at is a uh, call meeting uh, Wednesday, October 7th, if that fits with uh, District President Jensen's schedule. Um, I think... I think that's all I was going to highlight there. So um, not seeing any desperately waving hands for one that I've got. So um, with that, I wish you God's richest blessings in this. Evening.